Each time your workflow runs, it starts with an empty state. This way, past runs of your workflow won't affect future runs of your workflow. But sometimes you want to store data and use it in later workflow runs, or maybe even share data across workflows. This is where data stores come in handy. Unlike step exports, which only live during the lifetime of your workflow's execution, data stores persist across many runs and even across different workflows. Data stores are great for doing things like building counters or making arrays of unique information such as emails, so that way you don't accidentally run a workflow twice in the same customer, or just a quick timestamp tracker to see the last time a workflow ran. So let's go ahead and start with a brand new workflow. I've already configured this one to have an HTTP trigger, and I've used our hopscotch.pipedream.com tool to send a post request with some customer data like first name, last name, and email. We'll go back to our workflow and we can see right here that indeed first name, last name, and email are included within the body of the payload. And let's make a new step to store the customer's email to make sure we're not running the same workflow if that customer comes back again. So we're going to add a brand new step. And you can see here on the left hand side that there's a data stores app that holds the actions available to interact with data stores. So we're going to open this up and I'm going to use the add a single record so that way we can add the email to our data store. The very first prompt you'll see is to create a brand new store because there's not one in my account yet. So I'm going to open it and I'm going to name it emails. Well, let's name it customers actually. So we're describing customers and we'll set the key to email and we'll set the value to the email of the body given to us by the customer. Now we can test, and this should add a brand new record to our data store. We can see that the summary says we've successfully added a new record with the key email, and it returned the record stored. Now we can actually double check this within our dashboard. So we're gonna leave this workflow, head on back to the dashboard. I'm gonna leave without deploying here. And you can see on the left-hand side, we have a data stores portion of the dashboard. We can open this and sure enough, right here is the customer's data store that we just created. And we can open it and see right in here that the key has been set to the value of Weston at pipedream.com. Now we can do more than just look at the data here. We can actually edit it on the right-hand side. There is an edit button where we can edit the value manually. So if I want to change it to myself, say Pierce at Pipe Dream, we can do that. And we can also delete records manually. Now we said the whole goal of this workflow was to make sure we don't act on emails we've seen before, right? So let's head on back to our workflow and let's reopen it up. And in between the update add record, let's add a brand new step that will retrieve the email address in our data store. So we're gonna open this up and we're going to use the get record, select our data store that we created before, and we know that the key is email, and we don't want to create a new record if it's not found. So now when we test this, it should be able to pull that record we modified manually to say Pierce at Pipe Dream. We'll get the record, and sure enough, the return value is Pierce at Pipe Dream. And now we can use a filter, or we can use a Node.js step, or Python, or Bash, or Go, to make sure that we don't send another email to this same person that we've seen before. That covers the very basics of setting and getting data with pre-built steps within your workflows. But just to note, workflows can store JSON serializable data. So this includes objects, arrays, strings, and integers and numbers. In future episodes, I'm gonna show you how you can use data stores within your Node.js steps as well.